your Massachusetts real estate market update for November 7th, 2022. So what are we going to chat about? Single family and condo data, as always, like we do every week. But bonus section, because we're also going to take a look at multifamily, specifically for October 2022, and do a year-over-year -year analysis just to see the overall health in this marketplace. We're going to look at the interest rate environment, because there's some key data that comes out this week that we got to know about. Uh, we're also going to take a look at a consumer confidence index, specifically for real estate. Uh, that was dropped this week and we need to take a look at some data there because it's some very interesting and telling data and then we have a new segment where we're going to start tracking distressed properties that are currently on the market now distressed property is a single family or condo or multifamily property that is either lender owned or a short sale so some interesting stuff there uh, and then we got our luxury segment back for this week where we're going to stop by and take a look at a unbelievable penthouse condo in the back bay. Hi, I'm Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent that sold more than a thousand homes and I'm one of the state's top real estate agents. Should you have any questions, then know that I'm going to be your resource for answers. So let's jump into the single family market. We currently have 5,411 single family homes currently on the market in the state of Massachusetts. Now, this is six units less than we had last week. So for all intents and purposes, we can say inventory continues to be level. Now, here's what's interesting is that when you compare it to the same time last year, that, that number, that range continues to grow as now consumers have 1,240 more single family homes to look at than if they were looking to buy a home today last year. We had 963 newly listed properties in the state of Massachusetts. Now, the average for September and October was 1,046 units, uh, but, you know, so we were off that number, but last week's number was 957 units, so we're kind of within range of last week's number, only six units more. And then jumping over to the under agreements where we had 939 single family homes go under agreement. Now that's a little behind our four week rolling average of 999 units. We had 620 single family homes close last week for an average sales price of $638,000. Meanwhile, median sales price of $565,000. And then that months of inventory, months of inventory is how we figure out what type of market is. Is it a hot seller's market, equal market, or a buyer's market? Who has pricing power. Well, in this case, we actually saw our months of inventory slip a little bit from last week numbers down to 1.48 months compared to last week's 1.51 months. It's kind of important to note, though, for the last three weeks, it's really been hovering around that one and a half months worth of inventory, which is signaling a very strong seller's market. But I continue to say that these numbers are a lot weaker than they look. We're probably more around three, three and a half months if we're looking at just using the last two months worth of data versus the traditional four months of market data that we are currently taking. So moving on to the condo market. We had 2,784 condos currently on the market in the state of Massachusetts. Now this is a five unit increase from the same time last week. So we can pretty much say inventory in Massachusetts for both single family as well as condos at this point is stable, which is really great news. Now, even though inventory has been stable, when we look at the numbers from last year, Currently, buyers have an additional 128 more condos to choose from today than they did last year. And that's because this time last year, we started to see inventory uh, retreat. We started to see inventory being bought down, if you will. Um, so this is just something that we're going to continue to keep our eye on. And then for newly listed properties, we had 368 newly listed condos that came on the market. Now, the average in both September and October was 485 units. So yes, we are 24% below our average for newly listed properties last week something that we probably want to keep our eye on but then we had 315 condos go under agreement this week the average for both september and october has been 388 condos going under agreement each week so ultimately this means we were 19 percent below average this week just another thing that we probably want to keep our eye on and then moving on to the sales we had 264 condos closed this week for an average sales price of six hundred and sixty eight thousand dollars and a median sales price of four hundred and ninety nine thousand five hundred dollars then that months of inventory months of inventory here also retreated a little bit. We had months of inventory of 2.08 months compared to last week's 2.13 months. Do you like hearing what's going on in the Massachusetts real estate market? Then make sure you smash that like button and be sure to subscribe. So moving on over to the multifamily market, we currently have 1,134 multifamilies currently on the market in the state of Massachusetts. Now this is 10 units less than if we were to compare it to the same week last year. So for all intents and purposes, we're right there with the multifamily market last year and what we saw. In October of 2022, we had 513 multifamily
families close for an average sales price of $688,000 and a median sales price of $590,000. Now, if we were to compare October through 2022 to October 2021, that's when we had 776 multifamily properties closed for an average sales price of $643,000 and a median sales price of $545,000. So year over year, October 2022 versus October 2021, we've ultimately seen sales decrease by 34%, but we've seen uh, year over year pricing for October up by 7%. So then when we take the whole entire year from January 1st to the end of October for 2021, compared to 2022, this is what the numbers look like. Year to date in 2021, we had 7,134 multifamily properties closed for an average sales price of $650,000. And then when we compare it year to date to this year, we've had 6,029 single family properties closed for an average sales price of $720,000. So again, what this means comparing year to date data, Ultimately, sales are down by 15%. Meanwhile, prices are up by 11%. Headed over into the mortgage market, not much has changed, which can be a pretty good thing, especially because they increased the federal funds rate by 75 basis points. And if you've been around for a while, you will know that I've always said that the federal funds rate and the mortgage rates, they're not necessarily tied to one another. So what did we see this week? Ultimately, interest rates are still in the high sixes, low sevens. Not too much of a huge change. They went up and then they went back down. But we do have some really, really, really important data coming out this week, which is the consumer price index. Now, what happens here is when this data comes out, ultimately it sits there and either pushes up or pushes down the 10-year treasury note. Recently, it's been 10-year 10, 10 treasury spikes. And when you see that 10-year treasury spike, well, that ultimately means our mortgage rates are going to spike right with it. So that is why we need to continue to look at the consumer, consumer price index. That's why this is such an important week to ultimately tell and figure out where interest rates for houses are headed for the next month or so. Then consumer confidence in housing dropped. So let's take a look at this article where it says just 16% of consumers think now is a good time to buy with 37% of consumers thinking that prices is going to drop in the next 12 months. And this is up from last month's 35%. Now the 16% was a respondent low since this uh, index has started back in 2011. And another interesting thing here is to see that the share of respondents that said now was a good time to sell dropped from 59 to 51 percent so first off what are we what do i take from this well number one everyone is saying that now is a bad time to buy well generally speaking when you're looking for the best deals this is when you do it when blood's in the street if you will right so ding 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 this might be a really great time just based off of this consumer confidence index numbers and then also another thing that was really puzzling was that the amount of sellers saying that it was a good time to sell has drastically dropped too so ultimately yes the demand has dropped and then the seller supply has been dropping as well and, and these confidence numbers are kind of pointing to the same illustration so unless we have a major economic event that forces these sellers to come to the market we're not going to see those big huge price swings that we saw in 2008 that continues to be my theory at least here in the state of Massachusetts because as I have said in other parts of the country where you do have huge amounts of seller supply coming on from institutional sellers or I should say buyers that are now selling those properties as well as builders needing to unload that excess inventory we just don't have that here in the Boston metro market so let's talk for closures we're going to take a look at single family condos as well as multifamilies and we're going to take a look at all of those properties that are currently on the market in the state of Massachusetts. We're going to start keeping track of this on a week, maybe not week by week, maybe a month by month basis, because if we see a huge spike here, well, that could be telling to other parts of our market. We currently we currently have 139 foreclosure properties in the state of Massachusetts, plus an additional 32 short sales in the state of Massachusetts, making for a total of 171 properties. So well, 171 properties compared to the 9,000, close to 10,000 total units that we currently have on the market, ultimately means 1.8% of our available inventory are distressed sales. So that's our new baseline, 1.8%, and that is what we're going to continue to look at.
Now on to the Massachusetts luxury home, newly listed. We're going to go, as I said, to the Mandarin Oriental in the back bay at 776 Boylston Street. Now this is the penthouse unit, uh, unit 2E. It spans 6,829 square feet and it is four bedrooms and four and a half baths. It has floor to ceiling windows on all four sides providing unobstructed views from every room. It includes multiple terraces with two enormous private decks spanning over 3,000 square feet. And did you see that master bathroom with that bath? I mean, it's just incredible kind of looking out over those views. Um, also, did you see that fake grass on the terrace? I thought that was a pretty cool touch, personally. It has four-car garage parking, and the asking price is $24.99 million. Want to talk about your own personal real estate needs? Then I'd love to chat with you. Real estate's a passion of mine. I'd love to hear about what your goals are. All of my contact information is in the description below, but just as a heads up, I can't work with everyone. So if you're thinking of buying, whether it be in the next nine or 90 days, whenever it might be, you know, reach out to me now. So that way we can ultimately kind of get that conversation going and I can make sure um, I can work with you ultimately. And then if you have any questions or comments about any of the data that we've gone through today, then make sure you drop it in the comments section below you take the time to watch this video so i'm always going to take the time and answer any of your comments or questions it's just my big thanks to you uh just keep in mind that an informed person is a powerful person so until next time